biblically to support such a claim. The more ancient biblical record never mentions that Abraham was anywhere close to Mecca. He grew up in Ur of Chaldanis, 2500 years before Muhammad was born. He traveled to Haran, then to Hebron, which later was named after him. Today Hebron is called Al Khalil in Arabic and Hebron in Hebrew, which means the city of the friend. You may remember that Abraham's honorable name was the friend of God. Nevertheless, much research into the sources of Islam and the history of Kaaba has revealed some startling discoveries. Pardon me. It is now believed the building itself was actually constructed by Jewish immigrants who fled the persecution in Jerusalem in 70 AD. The shrine was constructed very closely like the main sanctuary of the Temple of Solomon but on a smaller scale. Sadly enough, between the time it was built and Muhammad's appearance, there were 500 years in which paganism took over, the shrine lost its original significance as a house of worship in the center of Mecca for the Jewish immigrants who built similar sanctuaries elsewhere in Arabia and even called them by the same name, Ka. But the one in Mecca became the most famous because of the annual fairs and markets which attracted people from all over Arabia. Another name for these shrines was Baytullah, which means house of God in Arabic. In Surah 22, 26 to 37, Muslims are instructed, listen carefully, to make a pilgrimage to Mecca, sacrifice some cattle, distribute charity to the poor, and worship Allah at the Kaaba. Additionally, we find that Muslims must turn their faces toward Mecca when, we, when they pray. Interestingly enough, the Sabians practiced all of these rituals in Mecca long before Islam appeared on the horizon of history. We are told that Allah is the God of the East and the West. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِكُ maghrib Why should one turn toward Mecca when it is time to pray? Surah 2150 says, Whensoever thou comest forth, turn thy face toward the inviolable place of worship, and wheresoever you may be, turn your face towards it. We must also ask, why should the faithful make a pilgrimage to Mecca? Are we turning the Kaaba into an idol for worship purposes by these practices? Or was the entire idea of the pilgrimage to Mecca an economic boost to the inhabitants of the city and Muhammad's tribe? Jesus the Messiah revealed the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well that true worshippers are to worship God in spirit and in truth. The geographical location was not that necessary. Jerusalem or Mount Ebal were no longer needed for spiritual worship. They only represented ceremonial traditions. In other words, the outer expression of religiosity is not as valid as the inward faith of the person himself in his heart. We need a clarification for the following question. Is the dwelling place of Allah in the Kaaba shrine, which would necessitate our turning our faces toward it in prayer? Isn't it true that heaven itself is the true domain of the Creator God? To verify the latter statement, Jesus the Messiah taught us to address God when we pray, Our Father who art in heaven. The residence of God is not in Jerusalem, neither in Mecca, not even in Rome. In fact, he wants to dwell in the human heart and reign supreme in our life through the Holy Spirit. He wants to bless us with his presence and make us a blessing to others through his power. Now, he thinks that uh, Abraham didn't build the Kaaba because the Bible doesn't mention that. Well, then this is an argument from silence. According to the rules of logic, such an argument does not hold. It means that in reading your Bible, you are not aware that Abraham went and built the Kaaba. But we should look at other traditions and consider that and see if, in fact, Abraham did build the Kaaba. And this, in fact, is what is known from the Arabs, that he did. But you say that Jewish immigrants built the Kaaba? Yes. Dr. Shirosh, I'd like you to cite me a reputable historian who has actually said I'll that. send it to uh, you in uh, Arabic. Uh, no, don't send it to me in Arabic. Come back here and tell us who it is. <laughs> Shukran. <laughs> Now, uh, what if uh, Sabians already turned their faces towards Mecca? That doesn't make any difference to us because if the house of God was known and Sabians were there before Muslims and they worshipped uh, the one true God and if there's nothing wrong with their worship or if the Muslims maintain the same things about their worship which was true and correct then this is fine because God can reveal uh, through a number of prophets given to people over time Muslims have no difficulty with those teachings. Now, if he's the God of the East and the West why turn towards Mecca? Well, it's a focal point for people because sometimes people need this focal point. Why we can ask, for example, that Solomon build a temple according to 1 Kings chapter 8 and then he prays to God to bless those who turn towards this uh, temple in worship. 
And to this day, Jews still turn towards the temple. Well, the temple is no longer there, but the remaining wall, the wailing wall is still there. And they're still required traditionally to do that. By the way, Jesus was a Jew. And you have maintained that the original disciples of Jesus were Jews. So they all turned their faces to the same thing. You ask why pilgrimage to Mecca? Well, we should ask of Jesus, why did you make pilgrimages to Jerusalem? At least three pilgrimages if we count the ones in the gospel according to John. If there's something wrong with making pilgrimages to a house, then you are condemning Jesus for making pilgrimages. You're listening to the Samaritan woman who says that God can be worshipped anywhere because the Samaritans did not go to pay homage to Jerusalem. They did not believe in that after the splitting between the north and the south. So you're saying the Samaritan woman is right and Jesus is wrong for making pilgrimages. Oh, that is so sad, Dr. Shirosh. Um, <laughs> so, finally, I... <laughs> Uh, finally, we, we can agree and say that God can be worshipped anywhere, and the Quran is right, uh, wherever you are, God is there, uh, but uh, there is a particular form of worship, and that uh, requires the Muslim in the formal prayers to turn towards uh, uh, the house of, of worship. Finally, God is just and fair. If we understand the whole conception of Qadr, this is uh, un uh, common between Muslims and Christians. That is not our topic tonight, uh, so there is no issue there to deal with, uh, because we have a common element, the belief that God is controlled everything and yet he punishes people. Thank you very much.